Uh, hey guys, welcome back to another portfolio update. Um, now this is a little bit of a weird one. I did a lot of buying and selling, a lot of portfolio reconstructing, and you guys do understand this. And I'm also going to be thinking about switching my portfolio over to Robinhood, uh, not only for the portfolio updates to be a little bit cleaner on that desktop. It's going to be a little bit more crisp with that uh, Robinhood layout but also because they're offering a lot of perks that I think I may benefit from. The 1% match on the transfers, which they just initiated, I could transfer over my portfolio and get 1% value for free. Now, this is not a sponsorship by them at all. I'm just telling you my thought process when picking a brokerage. Also, the Roth IRA match, which I plan to take advantage of, and the deposit match in the future with the credit card. It seems like an enticing deal, and I'm considering it. And I've previously been a big Robinhood hater, so it's surprising for me to say this myself. But let's get right into the portfolio update. Our snowball is continuing to roll our dividend growth snowball in full transparency over all our positions. You know how we do things here. And before we get into it, let's roll the intro. I've been a rich man, and I have been a poor man, and I choose rich every time. I make investing content and my channel is Dividend Dude. You should leave a like and subscribe if you're going to enjoy the video. A disclaimer, this is not financial advice. I am just a dividend growth investor trying to share my takes on dividend growth stocks and various other stocks. This is not financial or investment advice and always do your own due diligence before investing. Starting off, we have our buys, styles, and notes for the month. All of these are in April, except for the notes. Uh, those are not in April. But for the April buys, we could see I started off uh, the month strong buying some Apple when I believed it was cheap, but about a hundred dollars of Apple. I bought a lot of Starbucks and this is where, um, I believe I made a mistake. I bought a ton of Starbucks. I thought it was undervalued $89 70 cents, Bought a lot of visa, Bought about three shares of Starbucks here, bought a ton of visa, uh, initially, uh, ba based off the proceeds of this Canadian Pacific sell, which I got a thousand seven hundred seventy dollars for and made some good capital gains on that canadian pacific sell i believe i bought it at around 70 dollars a share so i made 18 dollars per share had about 20 shares of the company and it does it did come out to about that um range and i made some good money off that and uh the reason i sold canadian pacific overall i feel like it's a little bit too slow growing uh the acquisition they took on a lot of new debt and there was a high debt uh, level and a lofty valuation. I believe the stock has traded down a little bit and I believe it's still a great company, just a little bit too slow growing for my liking. And I put it into funds like obviously Apple, Starbucks, Visa, more Starbucks, Salesforce, Taiwan Semiconductor after earnings when I was on a little dip and more Visa. Like I said previously, I believe I said it on my last portfolio update. I want to make Visa a top position in my portfolio. I actually want Visa to be the largest position in my portfolio. I think it is great for me as a young person to have a high growing stable company that is going to continue to grow dividends at 16 to 17%, continue to buy back shares and grow free cash flow and be extremely predictable with low risk. And Visa meets all those requirements. So it's one that I've been buying up like crazy. Now for Starbucks, I believe that was undervalued. Obviously after earnings, it dropped even more. And I bought some Salesforce, uh, in the about the middle of April as it dipped a little bit after earnings. And this is another one that I believe in long term, another higher growth position. So I bought into two new companies over the month. I added to Taiwan Semiconductor, started into Visa, made a huge Visa position, sold Canadian Pacific. And as you can see notes here, I have notes because uh, some of the buys and sells that I did that you guys are going to see in my portfolio did actually not take place in April. These took place at the start of May. As you can see here, I sold completely out of my realty income position as well. So Canadian Pacific and realty income completely gone from my portfolio as I feel both of those companies were the slowest growing in my portfolio and uh, probably the lowest quality. I significantly added to Visa, S&P Global and Starbucks at the start of May. And this is after the earnings. So I significantly added to Starbucks at around $73 per share. Now, Starbucks is one that I've talked about and I've said I'm going to continue to buy and watch attentively, and that is exactly what I plan to do. And I do like these new additions into a little bit higher growth holdings that do pay dividends like Salesforce, like Visa, like Starbucks, and like Taiwan Semiconductor. So I think overall, this is getting my portfolio to the place I want it. Obviously going to continue to attentively watch my company's earnings. Been doing some live earnings calls reactions. So if you guys could check those out, that would be greatly appreciated. And continue to just get my portfolio into high dividend growth positions, high growth positions in general, trying to outperform the S&P 500 and create a growing stream of passive income. Next, let's go to the dividends received tab. In my dividends received tab, you could see we had a dividend 
a month of just under $50. We received the largest dividend I've ever received um, in my investing career so far, which was a $30.65 dividend from Vici, which I reinvested back into the position. This allows me to buy over one full share of Vici, and that is also the first time that that has ever happened. So a big milestone here on that Vici dividend. I collected an $8.21 Taiwan Semiconductor dividend, which I reinvested. I collected uh, both Realty Income and Canadian Pacific's dividend. Obviously didn't reinvest because I sold out of those two. And I uh, reinvested my interest back into my interest position. So $49.90 of dividend income over the month, all reinvested back into my portfolio. One thing that I do want to mention is my dividend income is going to drop off with the sellings of O and Canadian Pacific. Obviously, O was probably my highest yielding position, so dividend income dropping off. But in terms of long-term dividend growth and how I'm going to be set up for the next 10 years, I think I am set up a lot better. Now, companies on my watch list that I do want to discuss are obviously Amazon is on my watch list. And I also, um, I also do like Google as well, but there are two companies that I do believe to be uh, priced pretty uh, loft. They're, they're, they're pretty high. They're pretty pricey. Obviously looking for dividend growth opportunities when I do see it. And I want to keep my holdings to a minimum. So constantly high grading my portfolio is something that I'm trying to do. And I'm not afraid to try to get into the best long-term positions I can to let them compound, even if that means a little bit of selling in the short term. Uh, at slight losses or big gains like Canadian Pacific, I sold at a big gain. But now let's go over to Fidelity and show our portfolio. As you can see my portfolio here on Fidelity, we could see all my positions right here and all the data around my positions. We can see that Croc still makes up the largest uh, part of my portfolio at about 11% of my portfolio, but Visa is now a close second at about 10.3% of my portfolio. And this is one that I actually want to make my largest position in my portfolio. And Crocs and Disney actually both have their earnings coming up next week. Um, Disney is another one that's large in my portfolio. This is another one along with Starbucks that I'm watching attentively because these companies are a little bit on a delicate uh, path in terms of their earnings, in terms of the sentiment around the stock. So obviously watching both of them extremely closely is something I am doing, especially with Starbucks right now. As you can see, Taiwan Semiconductor being a close fifth, Vici being a close sixth, followed by Texas Roadhouse, Snap-on, Apple, Microsoft, S&P Global, and Salesforce. And this is Apple before the earnings bounce. The earnings bounce is going to probably make this company all the way up to the sixth or fifth biggest holding in my portfolio uh, because it did have quite the jump after earnings today, if you did not realize. As we can see, I still have about uh, over a percent of cash as we still have some pending activity in terms of cash that is going to be jumped into my cash position. And like I said, just trying to move into those higher quality holdings. Um, Disney and Starbucks are two probably that people are going to say are the lowest quality companies in my portfolio. And yes, I do believe you could argue that, but they're two companies that I believe in long term. And I believe in the moat and brand value of these two companies. And I believe that the companies are trading at a discount. Now, obviously watching the earnings attentively, and I'm not afraid to sell the companies if the intrinsic value of both of them starts to go in the wrong direction long term. Um, and I've taken a lot of criticism for these two holdings, but frankly, I don't care because they're companies that I believe in as long as, as well as every other stock in my portfolio. These are all companies I believe in for the long term. Now, obviously, if uh, there's opportunity costs, so if something like Amazon were to drop down 20, 30 percent in a day, then maybe I'd sell Disney or Starbucks to fund that position. But overall, these I think I have 12 holdings in my portfolio. These 12 holdings are 12 companies that I believe to be very high quality holdings and I believe in long term. And my portfolio is growing and snowballing with high dividend growth positions. Thank you guys for watching that video. If you did enjoy, please make sure to like and subscribe. How did your guys' portfolio perform for the month of April? Let me know in the comments below and join the Discord. It is improving rapidly. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.